Do you have any idea what this is? I know what this is. This is an espresso machine. No, no, no. It's a snow cone maker. That's what it is. No, you idiot. It's True Lies for the Sega Genesis, a classic, top-down view, run-and-gun video game based on the classic 1994 film True Lies, starring the Austrian Oak. For starters, this isn't a basic video game review. This is a love letter to this game. This is me slipping into this game's DMs with a dick pic. No, hey, what's up? No, hey, what do you do for a living? It's wham, bam, let's see that clam. I'm not shooting my shot with this game. I'm begging for basic missionary with my socks on. This game, in my opinion, is hands down one of the best 16-bit video games out there. No, I'm not joking either. Now, you might be sitting there saying, really? True lies on the Sega Genesis? I mean, look, I get it. It's a licensed game for Christ's sakes. But this game does not get enough love. What really chaps the inside of my ass is that most reviews that I've watched on YouTube said that this game is just okay. Like, just okay? Dude, come on. If you've never played this game before, don't be like Samwise Gamgee sitting at the pub with a pint glancing over at Rosie Cotton. Get your fat ass up there and go say hi to her. But it's up to me to change the view of this video game. I'm just a small YouTube channel, but hey, it needs to be done. It needs to start somewhere. The word needs to spread like the X-Wings laser canyons while approaching the Death Star. This game is amazing. Now look, is it perfect? Of course not but I'll do my best to point out some of its flaws, and I'll try not to blow this game like a smoker holding a stubborn dandelion puff. Now let's get the obvious out of the way. This video is not nostalgia talking. I loved this game as a kid, and I still love it as an adult. And trust me, there's plenty of games out there that I loved as a kid, but can't stand anymore. Achoo! Oh look, like these games. Look, I still enjoy them, but they're just not as enjoyable anymore. As adults, we know better, and that's what being blinded by nostalgia is. It's still enjoying something you liked as a kid, knowing very well that the thing sucks. But where do I begin with this game? I know I'm making this game out to be like a 10 out of 10, and it's not. It's not perfect, I know. But what 16-bit game is? I mean, I guess you could say Super Mario World, sure. Sonic 2? Yeah, maybe. Super Metroid? Link to the Past? Well, definitely, those games are definitely 10 out of 10. But I can still point out some minor flaws that I don't love about those games. Like climbing those goddamn walls in Super Metroid is harder than spelling Schwarzenegger after six beers. But why do people dismiss this game? Or not know about it? Am I just that asshole? Sure, the music is nothing crazy, but it still works and it fits the environment very well. Some people said the enemies are repetitive. Dude, get the fuck out of here with that crap. You know what's repetitive? Random ass turn-based battles in a 2D RPG. That's repetitive. This is an awesome top-down view run-and-gun video game with a shotgun, an Uzi 9mm, grenades, landmines, and even a flamethrower. A flamethrower! Picture the top-down view level of Contra 3 The Alien Wars, but this game is way better than that. Surprisingly, the game follows the movie pretty closely. If you've never seen it before, watch it. It's directed by James Cameron, and it's classic 90 Schwarzenegger. But if you've seen the movie, but never played the game before, you'll totally recognize some of the levels that coincide with the movie. Of course, there's like a level or two that have nothing to do with the movie, but hey, you gotta add fluff somewhere, right? The game starts out in the Chateau, which is how the movie starts. You play as Harry Tasker, an undercover secret agent for Omega Sector, a top secret US counterterrorism agency. Gibb, played by Tom Arnold, who is awesome by the way, is your partner and is the classic video game sidekick companion who gives you advice and directions. You're all familiar with this in modern gaming, you know, the guy who tells you how to move, where to go, gives you directions and explaining how to play the game all through your earpiece. Any modern video game you play, you've had that. But back then, on a 16-bit cartridge, it was through text at the bottom of the screen. Ah, uh, the 90s. 
The B button is for shooting. The A button is to lock your character into position, which is very handy when it comes into the later levels. And the C button is your somersault button to dodge bullets. I'm using the six button controller, so the Z button is used to switch weapons. If you're gonna play this game, use the six button controller, it's just easier. In the first level, the little trick is that the enemies wearing suits won't attack you if you don't attack them first, which again, coincides with the movie since Harry's undercover. Anyways, this level's pretty simple. Once you get further, the enemies wearing the yellow shirts will start attacking you immediately. Three shots to kill these guys on the normal mode, or one center blow of the shotgun will wipe these guys out. The blue dudes are a little bit more aggressive ones and will take six shots to kill them. Now, great thing about this game is that there's a hard mode, which gives it an awesome replay value. Enemies take more bullets and do more damage to you. Of course, the civilians can get in your way on the first level. Ugh, come on, move. Oh my god, get the hell out of here! Ugh. FYI, if you kill three civilians, you gotta start the level over again, so be careful. Great thing I love about this level are the secrets. No joke, for like 30 goddamn years, I had no clue how to get this extra life. God bless YouTube and some random ass guy for knowing the secret. I found this video by the username Renan BRJ, that's R E N A N B R J, and he posted how to grab this. Renan BRJ, I salute you, good sir, and please don't bang my wife. Here you gotta blow out this back wall and enter. Crazy, never knew that. Finally got it. Now this secret I did find on my own, which is where you get the flamethrower. Oh baby, this is the best weapon in the game and only shows up on a few levels. One fireball and these guys are toast. <laughs> Second part of the first level is running down the hill. This level was always crazy to me. It just looked awesome for a Sega Genesis game. Tons of action on the screen is just mayhem, and it actually followed the movie pretty well. I mean, the guys going down on the skis with the Uzi 9mm was awesome. I guess technically you can just go down the slope and just shoot everyone, or you can just do a somersault down and avoid the helicopter, but this was a great level. Second level is the mall, which again, coincides well with the movie. Remember that big fight in the bathroom where he had a pack of cigarettes as a hidden camera and the old guy's taking the dump? Great scene. One of the small things that I love about this game is that the NPCs will react to your gunfire, where some won't. This is the level where enemies start chucking grenades at your direction of travel and things start to pick it up just a little bit. One of my favorite things to do in this level is to move in the direction of the civilians so they get killed by the grenades. Whoops! Oops! <laughs> Sorry, lady. My bad. But the first two levels are, of course, the easiest, and the civilians are thrown in there just to get in your way. I always thought the boss level in this game was awesome. Some badass with a shotgun. Reminds me of the beginning of the first level of Goldeneye where he sneaks into the bathroom. Classic. Now, if you didn't know, you have to destroy the bathroom doors before you can beat the level, or else these guys will keep respawning. Come on. Jesus Christ, die already. Finally, ugh. Man, if you thought that guy was tough, wait until you see the other guys. This guy was cream cheese compared to the other levels. The third level is the park, which again, coincides. How many times am I gonna say coincide? But it coincides with Harry chasing Aziz through the mall on horseback. I'll be honest, this is probably my least favorite level, but it's still fun as hell. This is where the game really picks up the difficulty. I always, always, always had trouble with this level as a kid. It's the classic, hey, you gotta find a key to unlock the gate through a giant maze, blah, blah, blah. But this level is cool in many ways. For starters, when I first saw this enemy as a kid, holy crap, a guy with a machine gun? Goddamn. Here is where you start using your grenades as a weapon, and this is where your mechanics with the A lock button really start to come in handy. The enemies now start to move to avoid your gunfire and chase you, and it's a must to keep Harry locked in position to fire those six bullets to kill these blue-shirted ball sacks. I'll explain later in the video, but each weapon will be strategic when dealing with a specific enemy and the scenario that you're in. But getting back to the grenades, 
Here, you can use them to kill these high-powered enemies without shooting them. Like this right here is awesome. The guy can't get to you, but you can throw it over the bushes and bam, kill him. It's a nice introduction to the strategy you'll have to use in the later levels. And trust me, some of these pricks hiding behind the trees are more annoying than your sack sticking to your thigh while driving your Toyota Camry. Oh my god, dude, stand still! Uh, are these karate guys enemies? Yeah, well, I guess there's only one way to find out, huh? Oops! <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Now this boss is pretty badass, I'm not gonna lie. When I first started playing this as a kid, I was like, holy crap. This guy's shooting grenades at me? God damn. But, hey, I finally got past him. Man, I love the subway level. As a kid, I thought this was the coolest level ever. The slow stealth music playing to let you know that some guy is waiting around the corner looking to bust a cap in your ass. Danger lurking behind every wall. Hot steam waiting to burn you like a bad case of the clap. This level is epic. What's crazy is that, and again, 30 years later, I just learned this, you can find the train lever switch in the beginning of the stage to save you time, right over here to the right, Ugh, these scummy developers, man, and their secrets. Pretty much you need that lever to stop the trains from running, so you can enter the hidden Chrism Jihad hideout, which is behind the train tracks. Because once you get past there, you go in their hideout, and you blow up the computer database. But overall, this level always crushed my soul as a kid. I had trouble getting past this level because I always died at the end. But hey, we're adults now, and like I've said in previous videos, we're better at video games as adults than we are kids. Now this is the final boss for the subway level, and I gotta say, when I first played this as a kid, I was like, holy shit. It was like a stampede of crazy enemies. Check it out. Good lord, can I get some backup here please? Jesus Christ, how many guys are coming in here? Like I said, it's like an avalanche of enemies. If you're not good at this game and you're not familiar with holding that A button and locking your position in and killing these guys, you're gonna get your ass kicked. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, get the hell away from me. My God, <laughs> show some freaking mercy. Man, I forgot how tough this boss level is, but Jesus Christ, but eventually I get past it, but you'll see. Sheesh, absolutely ruthless. And like I said before, if you don't master holding that A button down and locking Harry in position to get your bullets off, you're going to lose a lot of lives at this end boss, but let's take a look at the next level. The fifth level, the docks. Oh baby, this is where it starts to get really intense. And honestly, just like in Halo Combat Evolved, your pistol will be your best friend on this level. I say that because your pistol kind of acts as like a mini sniper in a sense where you can position yourself in a corner and kill an enemy without wasting your Uzi 9mm. The Uzi 9mm. It's really important to use the strategy instead of going in guns blazing with your shotgun because this level will F you the hell up. The object is to destroy the crates on the dock that are loaded with the weapons. And of course, again, this matches with the scene in the movie where Harry is drugged, interrogated, and throws a Patterson trocar in some dude's eye. Man, that scene is awesome. But getting back to using your pistol, the deeper you get into this game, the more you'll realize that certain weapons are more effective against certain enemies. Like using your shotgun against a flamethrower or a shotgunner is suicide because you have to keep your distance. Or using your Uzi 9mm the Uzi 9mm against a rocket launcher is not effective because you have to get out of the way quickly and you can't move and shoot with the Uzi 9mm. The Uzi 9mm and the pistol, your long range weapon that can be used while moving, which is perfect for escaping an enemy that's chasing you down. 
This kind of reminds me of Gunstar Heroes, where you have to pick and choose from the start whether or not you want to be able to shoot and move at the same time, or stay in place and shoot in all eight directions. It's a pretty cool way to add strategy into the game. Like this is a perfect example, the shotgun is the best weapon against this rocket launcher guy because I'm able to get off three rounds quickly and move out of the way as soon as I shoot him. I can't do that with the Uzi 9mm. The Uzi 9mm? Because you can't move and shoot with that gun. So overall, the more you play this game, the more you'll know what to do with a specific weapon regarding a certain scenario. I won't go crazy with the next two levels, which take place in Chinatown and an oil refinery, because this video would be about 45 minutes long. But goddamn, these levels are tough as nails, but fun to play. Chinatown is pretty much like a tougher version and a mixture of the subway and the mall levels where it's like a crazy maze and you gotta disarm the nuclear bomb. And the oil refinery is again, a more difficult version of the dock stage. But don't let this fool you, this isn't a reskin of a level. Each level has their own awesome secrets. Crazy areas where you have to strategize to get past. It's a blast. I will say that these two levels don't really have anything to do with the movie and were, I guess, added to make the game longer, which hey, fine by me because these levels are awesome and add a lot of value to the game. Besides, this is a 16-bit game. How accurate were licensed games back then, right? Now this level is pretty wild. The Florida Keys is by far the most unique level. A total switch up from the game and kind of similar to the second part of the first level where you're escaping down the snow hill just like in the movie you got to destroy the trucks that are containing the nuclear weapons believe it or not this level is hard as hell but it's also fun oh baby the grand finale the big queso the final countdown the office party level my god this level whew, brings back so many good memories even playing this level alone on the hard mode could be considered a tough mini game in itself. It's just so effing good. Levels like these come once in a blue moon in a 16-bit game. Like taking a no wiper dump after a night of pounding IPAs? Savor the flavor, my man, because you won't experience this too often. Again, this coincides with the film perfectly, and it's up to you to save your daughter Dana. Mine Dana? Dana? No! I won't show you the entire level because that'll take too long, but I'll give you a little montage of the last level. It's a doozy. Just like in Rocky IV, cue the montage. Now look, is this game a 10 out of 10? Of course not. It's not on the same tier as Super Mario World, Super Metroid, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. I get that. I understand that. But at the same time, no matter how many times I play this game, it never gets old and I just fall in love with it more and more. I don't know what it is. Like I said, it's not the nostalgia talking because there's plenty of games out there that I can't stand that I loved as a kid, but this game is like a fine wine. 
Overall, this game is an amazing 16-bit experience. I can't really think of too many games like this. I mean, there's a ton of run and gun games out there, but not so much from the top-down view. I guess the best game to compare this to is Zombies Ate My Neighbors, which is a fantastic game. If you love that game, you're definitely gonna love this. Now look, I'm not sitting here saying that True Lies is better than Zombies Ate My Neighbors, but it's very similar, but I actually like True Lies better, but I'll let you decide. I mean, Christ, I still have the cheat codes that I wrote down as a 10 year old. Look at the handwriting, it's perfect. That's how you know how much I love this game as a kid. I mean, Christ, even my friend Vinny, aka Vinny Bag of Donuts, who always makes fun of me for playing video games, loved this game as a kid. So that right there just goes to show you how great this game was. In closing, this was one of my first video games that I got for Christmas with my Sega Genesis, and I cherish it to this day. This game was a staple of my childhood, and it always brings me back to Christmas as a kid. I guess that's why I made this video around this time, because I usually play it around Christmas time. It's kind of become a small tradition for me, I guess. But look, give this game a chance. If you played it before as a kid and chalked it up as a decent weekend rental, give it another chance and have an open mind about it. I hope this video did this game justice, because like I said before, this game does not get enough love, and I consider this to be an underrated gem. I mean, hell, I might even go as far as calling this game a masterpiece. That's right, I said it. Guys, thank you so much for watching, and please give this game a try. You won't be disappointed.